I don't know if he's shy, I don't know if he's scared of the camera, I don't know if that's his shtick. But the dude's an animal, a beast, so strong that we're wondering, could he in fact win the world's strongest man? Coach Greg, and have you heard of Tom Haviland? This is that massive monster of a man, but you never see his face. He's working out, he's hiding his face, he doesn't want everyone to see him. I don't know if he's shy, I don't know if he's scared of the camera, I don't know if that's his shtick. But the dude's an animal, a beast, so strong that we're wondering, could he in fact win the world's strongest man? And does the current strongest man think he has a shot? Well, you bet he does. And so we're gonna go over his lifts, compare them to the world's strongest man and see how does he stack up and could he in fact win the world's strongest man? And so for all the morons out there, we're gonna cover this. I don't believe the guy is natural. Stop asking, is he natural? Are you kidding? Do you really think anyone in the world's strongest man is actually natural? Yeah, they're not going to talk about it. Of course they're not. They can't. But there's no world's strongest man that's natural. Get it out of your heads. Be saying like, oh, is the professional bodybuilding world champion natural? What is wrong with you? And so no, he's not a natural. Next, there's no way I believe he's 400 pounds. Six foot eight and 400 pounds with a six pack? Do you really think that's possible? Not even Thor the Mountain has that much muscle. There's no way a guy is gonna be shredded at six foot eight and 400 pounds. It doesn't make sense. He's on the quest to be 400 pounds with abs. And he is well on the way. He's a guy from Queensland. He just trains with his, his back to the camera, Joe's training system. And so what makes this guy even more impressive is he's basically training in his backyard. He's training outside in the woods. Is he training in some island somewhere? He's not training a commercial gym. And so how did he get this strong? He's done things across the board. He's not just a great deadlifter, a bench presser, or strong grip. I've seen him do everything and I can't pick out one thing that he can't do really well. And so first things first, to be the world's strongest man, you have to be good at everything. You can't just be a great squat, bench and deadlift. It's more than just being a powerlifter. You need to have strength, you have to have speed, you have to have stamina, you have to have a number of things, but this guy, he has it all. And so we're gonna compare his best lift, see how does he stack up against the world's strongest man. So he walked with a 1200 pound yoke in his shoulders, I've done more than that. I've gone up to 1350. That being said, if you look at the equipment he trains on, it is not spec. And so in the yoke carry, which Mitchell Hooper has the world record and he's literally the best at this in the world, Tom can do 1,200 pounds, Mitchell 1,350 pounds. Although Tom's axle is not as advanced, it's not done to spec, he says he could probably lift a little bit more with the proper axle, but I don't believe he can do it as fast as Mitchell Hooper. Maybe he can lift more weight. Maybe he can squat up more weight, 1,400 pounds on his back. But Mitchell Hooper, he sprints with it. I trained this with him in person. I had the axle, I was running across the gym and I watched him pick up double the weight, maybe it was triple the weight and run twice as fast. It makes no sense and so there's no way I believe any person on this planet can be like Mitchell in the axle. He's done 235 pound bicep curls and Project Bicep, it went relatively well. I think we're getting better. I sure as hell could tell you there's no way I'm curling anywhere close to 235. Next up, any kind of curling exercise, the biceps. Sorry, but Mitchell Hooper's biceps, they're not impressive. They're very strong, yes, but they're not nearly as strong as Tom. And so any event where you have to do bicep curls, where you have to carry things with your arms, I do believe that Tom has an advantage over Mitchell Hooper. He does a lot of zurchers. He's done a 626 pound zurcher carry, two sets of 30 seconds for continuous walking. And so up next, the Zercher and Tom, he's lifting 750 pounds, which is way more than Mitchell Hooper. But at the World's Strongest Man, you have to hold this event and you run around in circles. You're not just walking, you're going as fast as possible. And so for me, this is an advantage for Mitchell. Mitchell is so quick and so agile. Remember, he used to play football. Also, he's a marathon runner. He has incredible endurance. And so if it's an event involving running and speed, not just strength, Mitchell Hooper, he has a clear and concise advantage. Not only has he done a 275 pound of stone to shoulder, but he put it up on his shoulder, walked five steps, did a set of squats, moved it to his other shoulder, did another set of five steps and did squats. I don't know how that would feel. And so Mitchell, I think he's underestimating his skills right now. He says Tom had 275 pound rock, puts it on his back and walks five steps and squats it. Mitchell Hooper's did 400 pounds on his shoulder. 400 compared to 275. This is what I think. The hard part's getting it on your shoulder. 
If you can get it on your shoulder, it's all you need to do. You don't need to take five steps. You don't need to squat. You really think it's hard to squat 275 pounds. If you can stabilize the rock, you can clearly squat that much weight. These guys are squatting over 800 pounds. And so in an actual Atlas stone competition at the World's Strongest Man, you're doing multiple stones and they keep getting heavier. If you don't do it fast enough, you don't win. And if you can't lift the heaviest stone, you're clearly not winning. And so although 275 pounds is very impressive, especially to walk around and squat it, but everyone at the World's Strongest Man can do more than this. And so I clearly think that Mitchell Hooper has a huge advantage in the Atlas Stones. He's done a 926 pound deadlift. This is no suit. This is no fancy deadlift bar. This is just straight lifting. This would be very close to what I'd be capable of on a good day. And what about the deadlift? Everyone loves watching the deadlift. Well, Tom, 926 pounds with no straps, no nothing. Remember, at the World's Strongest Man, they're allowed straps. Mitchell Hooper, on the other hand, 981 pounds with the actual equipment they use at World's Strongest Man. Remember, that's over 50 pounds more. I don't believe that Tom could add in 50 more pounds with straps. And so because Mitchell's already lifted that much weight, I do believe he has the advantage. Not only that, Mitchell's only been lifting for like four years in strongman competitions. He's going to get stronger every single year. He was a marathon runner four years ago. And so clearly, if we're going to the future to see who's going to be better, Mitchell has much more room for growth than Tom, who's been training his entire life. And so I do believe Mitchell has a clear advantage in the deadlift. Next up with squats. Now, the best I've ever done is 800 pounds, a little over 810, 815 for a double. Tom has done 692 pounds for multiple reps. Next up, the squats. Well, Tom's done 691 for five reps, but Mitchell's done 800 for two reps. And if you're basing it on the math equations to predict how much you can lift, 692 for five reps does not equal an 800 for two pound rep. And consider Mitchell Hooper is at least five inches shorter. He doesn't have to move the bar as far. It's gonna be easier to get more reps. He doesn't have to work as hard to get each rep in. And so that is in his favor as well. And remember, at World's Strongest Man, they're not doing one rep maxes. That's powerlifting competition. A world's strongest man, they're probably going to squat a car and see how many reps they can get in a minute. They're maybe doing 10, maybe 15 reps. Again, the more reps you have to do, the better of an advantage Mitchell Hooper has. And so if you're squatting at the world's strongest man, I do believe Mitchell has a huge squatting advantage. And lastly, he's done a clean dessert to catch with a squat, 300 pounds, 396, 485. I could not clean 485 pounds. Definitely not. And so Tom cleans 485 pounds. Mitchell, he can't get that much weight. I do believe he gets close to that, 465 pounds. And so if the competition at World's Strongest Man is simply to do a clean, I do believe that Tom would beat him in this event. But I've never seen them just do cleans at the World's Strongest Man. What I do see them do is clean the weight and press it over their heads, usually with a thick bar. I've recently seen Mitchell Hooper do, perhaps it was 465 pounds. And so I do believe at the World's Strongest Man, if you include pressing the bar overhead, I think Mitchell still has the advantage. And so if Tom actually showed up to World's Strongest Man, I personally think Mitchell would beat him in every single event. I'm not saying that Tom isn't strong, but Mitchell almost beats everyone at every single event. And so is it really shocking that a guy who's never done a strongman competition before, not in his life, could actually show up to an event like this where you need to train for months and or years to perfect your technique, to know what you're doing, to be able to save your energy on certain events and know where to excel the most? Does it really make sense that he could show up and win the actual competition on his very first try? That would be analogous to someone showing up to their very first bodybuilding competition and beating Derek Lunsford or Chris Bumstead. Yeah, they have a great physique in the gym. You look at them, they're, they look amazing. But what about their posing? What about when they move? Are they gonna look incredible? Are they gonna know how to present their physiques as well as somebody like Chris Bumstead? I don't think so. And so let me know in the comment section, who do you think would win? Do you think Tom would have a chance? Would he beat him at any single event? Don't forget, we have GO2max, my number one selling supplement, and soon to be back in stock will be Turk Builder. We also have Ecti Builder, remember various Ecti steroids, and obviously tens of thousands of people have used these products, and they do in fact work. And remember, you don't have to buy any supplements whatsoever. People, they love to complain when people start selling things. Oh my God, he sells a cookbook, a training book. He's coaching people. How horrible. I give free diet and training programs and they're close to 50 pages. And so you can complain all you like or you can head over to my website and get stuff for free. Which sounds better? Complain or get free stuff? Subscribe, click the bell button, comment to boost the algorithm. Don't forget to like this video if you like to watch one of those two bloops. And of course, training books, cookbooks, coaching plans by me and my team, phone comments, the Circle Diet Book, and until next time, I am out.